When we talk about the early days of Peninsular Malaysia and the interracial marriages that took place back then, the first thing that comes to mind would be the Peranakan, or perhaps the Baba Nyonya families. In fact, Malacca is home to another interracial community, descendants of 15th century Malacca during the dynasty period. As South Indian traders and Straits Malaysians fell in love and got married, the descendants of these marriages are called the Chiti. His name is Nadarajan, a Chiti village dweller who, just like his Malay friends, likes wearing his sarong. He doesn't speak Tamil but instead a Malay dialect called Bahasa Baba. While he is a devout Hindu, he also pays his respects to his ancestors as per Chinese tradition. Today he takes us to where he grew up. The first thing we saw as we reached the village was a museum of Chiti culture that he has spent six months building. This is where he tells us the story of his ancestors. Dutch to monopoly all the trading. And finally the city side finally is quite difficult to do trading because of these Dutch people. So most of them decide to go back because that is the last ship is going back to India. And there's no ship coming back only. Problem they cannot go back because they married to a local woman who is married down here is quite difficult to bring back their wife. That's why they decide on that moment. I will no longer go back to India. I kind of my communication between India. I will do whatever I do. I will practice whatever I from India bring. I will practice. So that is where the Chitti was born. Just like the Peranakan people, Chittis were brought up by a Malay mother, which infused their life with Malay culture. They would almost exclusively speak Bahasa Baba, wear sarongs, and take a strong liking to Malay food. The father, who would be the clan representative in most cases, would ensure that their child has an Indian name and has strong Hindu beliefs. When we take a closer look at Bahasa Baba, we also find that it is a rather unique language. Like they call pinggan, we call piring. Like the chawan, they call changke. Like Monday, they call hari satu, hari dua, hari tiga. Bayang, they call semayang. Pisau, it's called pisau. Tandas, they call ciwan. It's similar to Baba Nyo. Because the local are you've been using the word, so they follow. So that is normal word to uh, everyday word we use. But today the word you can't hear anymore. Because they used Bahasa Baba to communicate, Chitis were heavily influenced by Baba Nyonya culture. Even in their daily lives, Chinese tradition shines true. Like the kue, kue, <coughs> kue ku. They put the kue ku influence on the Baba. Because why? They are good to the Baba. The Baba might be say, oh, my good friend, lah, I do for you this kue. Eh? And you smayang, bila the Datuk Lumia Nenek smayang, kan boleh cakap, my God, kacik kue ni. Ah, so they give you the kue. And then you start to pray. After that, when your your daughter or son or see, eh, my father last time put this kue ku. Ah. You go and buy kue ku, you go and do and you put. As we left the museum, Nadarajan took us to a Hindu temple built during the time of the Dutch occupation. It is believed that the Chitti people were then quite poor and could not afford to adorn the temple. Thus, there were no colourful deities above the entrance, but just a white wall to greet us. Even then, this was an important spiritual pillar for the Chitti people. Hence, many worshippers still come here to pray. It's called Sri Anggala Parameswari, and the nickname is Kolam Besar. Why they call Kolam Besar? Because in, in the centre there, you can see one... Uh, so the there is a high step there, one, two, three, four. Is a uh, well, there when they pour water, how much water, the water won't be full. But we don't know where the water goes now. So you can see only from here. Uh, normally the temple will open on 7 o'clock. Finally, we arrived at Nadarajan's house. Over here, his wife was going to show us how to make the traditional kueh bonggong. As time went by, Chitti people began to face an identity crisis. After Malaysia achieved independence, the small Chitti population was dwarfed by the majority Malay, Chinese and Indian population, which led to the Chittis becoming neither fish nor fowl in the polarised ethnic landscape of modern-day Malaysia. Indian who make us like that, 
they said, why you are Hindu, but the name Indian, but you can't speak Tamil. And there is a question asked me last time. You speak to your God, what? I said, Malay, eh, cannot, you're like your God, you don't know how to listen. But we have to explain to them. If I can speak Tamil, there is no difference between you and me. Because I pray to the same God. You pray to the same God. Religious is the same. The only the culture, the language shows me who I am. Despite harsh external challenges, Nadarajan believes that Chiti culture should continue to live on. Therefore, besides bringing others on the same tour that he just took us on, he is also putting together a book, hoping that in his lifetime he can do his part for his community and leave a memoir of the Chiti people for generations to come.